Hey, welcome to the Push Pull Sales and Marketing Podcast. I'm Marcello. And I'm Sherry. And each episode will provide you with sales and marketing strategies that you can implement immediately into your own business. Today, we're going to be talking about shortening the sales cycle. Uh, this is a topic a lot of salespeople will like hearing, a lot of businesses will like hearing. Uh, and we'll give you some different ideas, some different uh, tips and tricks to, uh, to get the job done faster. Um, so first off, when it comes to shortening the sales cycle, a lot of salespeople, what they do is they put so much internal pressure on things that are really outside of their control. So that means, hey, uh, I need the uh, engineering department to work up some specs and I need them to do this and I need, I need pricing to get this out the door as soon as possible. And a lot of times what will happen, they'll rush their people to do that and maybe not have a qualified uh, prospect and then it just sits and it sits. Most of the problem with the sales cycle is more involved on the decision-making process and not so much on the actual internal things. There are some things you can certainly do that can shorten the this, this cycle internally, but you need to have uh, meetings and you need to have time with your own people before you have a really, really big deal that you're trying to push out the door. So the first thing that you said there sounded more like you would be delaying the start of the sales process. Is that not what you intended? No. When, when, I, when I say this, when we like talk about Like if you this, were saying other departments aren't ready, other, you're, they're, you're rushing other departments, is it just sometimes a matter of making sure that everything's in place before you start the sales process, or are you... I mean, that, that yeah, pretty much. I mean, you got to make sure you have the right parameters and stuff like that, but I'm just talking about, hey, I have this prospect. I think I can close in the end of the quarter. Okay. Um, can you get this? Can you help me work up this proposal? I need... I need you know, it's where it's something where it might be beyond the salesperson's uh, range, or let's say I need a sort of any special price concession and stuff like that. Or I'm talking more of a uh, engineering type environment, or more of a uh, manufacturer's environment where there's more technical people involved, and the sales rep is trying to force things internally. Um, in, in terms of starting, yeah, I mean, that, so should they be forcing things internally? It should already be streamlined beforehand. You okay. shouldn't wait till oh, I'm, if I don't get this, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss my quota. You know, I'm and I'm trying so, to convey a sense of urgency with that. Okay, so shortening the sales cycle is basically working on the processes, making sure that there's things in place that are the most efficient, not just when it's the, you know, the last hour before before your commissions meeting and you really want to close a deal. It hey. should be something that's ongoing, that's that's happening the same way. Um, regardless of when the sale is or who the sale is, those same processes should be in place. Exactly. And in, in terms of internal too, and, and, and that might be, we did a, a thing on, um, on negotiations and, 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 and all that good stuff. In terms of conflict management and, and setting up processes, um, sometimes what will happen internally in companies is there's nothing necessarily in place and maybe three different departments have a certain deadline that they all need to come together and work on something. Mm-hmm. And maybe they have different views because it wasn't communicated properly. Okay, well, you provide this, then I'll do this, and I'll do this. Mm-hmm. And sometimes what you'll see is a week later and say, well, I can't do anything. I didn't get the numbers from Billy. How am I supposed to do anything if I didn't get the numbers from right. Billy? Um, and Billy's like, w- what are you talking about? You always do your thing first, and I need to actually get it from Joey. So I don't know what, what you're blaming me. So internal, you should have effective communication. I hate to say it. Um, you know, should really be able to, to kind of meet up. So an example would be this. Let's say, um, I don't know, you're a marketing company uh, and you have a, a customer you're looking to get a proposal out the door. You think you have a really good feeling about it uh, and you have a couple different um, possibilities. So one person is going to do the research and say, okay, this is the market. The other person is going to figure out a cost for customer acquisition. And the salesperson's job is just basically say, hey, look, we're awesome. To present the facts. And, and, and to go ahead and present the facts. And maybe somewhere along the line there's some sort of break in communication internally where, okay, well, you were supposed to get this from the client or, or I'm, not, I'm not figuring out the cost per acquisition first. You need to figure out what the market is. What does it matter what the cost per acquisition is if I don't know what the market is like and what the size of it is? Right. And um, ideally you want the people, you want their tasks to match up with their strengths. You, know, you don't necessarily want your salesman coming up with those kind of numbers or you don't want, you know, sim- just like you wouldn't want um, me, you know, p- 
<laughs> putting together your robot that's going to get shipped out. Um, you need to have the right person for the job. Didn't you win? Like, weren't you homeschool? Didn't you win some sort of engineering contest? Like, some super duper bridge that can a hold A bridge, like... but not a robot. That's... I'll build you a bridge. Awesome. <laughs> um, but you, to kind of kind of backtrack, the most, and this is what salespeople will, will tell me too, and they'll complain internally, and they'll say, hey, um, what can I do to convince my manager to push this along? Or how can I get my people to be more on board and stuff like that? Uh, I can give you some 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 basic tips about communication and, and effectively establishing who does what. Um, but a lot of what you can do to shorten the sales cycle is more so on the sales rep than, than, than the actual people around them. It's very easy to point fingers and blame other people. So, for okay. example, um, I have a prospect coming up. It's uh, it's probably a one-and-a-half to $2 million account. Mm-hmm. Um, I can push and prod and get help from other people to run, you know, 1,600 rates and, and, and do some things and run the analysis and, and do all that. And realistically, I can push and pressure them to do maybe a week's worth of analysis in maybe a couple of days, mm-hmm. and that'll shave that off the off the sales cycle. But if I'm not doing the right things, if I'm not asking the right questions, yeah. it's going to drag out a couple of weeks anyway. So, yeah, okay. on one end, on my end, I can probably shave off a couple of days, maybe a couple of hours. Mm-hmm on the customer's end is really where I can shave off that time and how I can mm-hmm. and how I can Speed do that we're gonna kinda the process of them trusting you and, and being ready to actually buy. Exactly. The money where the and I'm is. and I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad you said trust. Um, so we know people do business with people who they know, people who they like, people who they trust. So first off, uh, basic shortcut is you have to let people know you. The easiest way to know you is really to say what you do different. Um, the brain processes contrast a lot better. So if something stands out, they understand that. So if your website, you know, you can establish a, um, we make, um, I don't know, crash resistant windshield white, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> we, 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 we make brake resistant windshield or, or, or whatever it is, or, you know, thermo, I, I don't know, really fast cars. We make the fastest cars you can possibly buy with the lowest emissions. Something very quick and very simple. Um, on your LinkedIn profile, it should really quick say what you do. So in order for them to get to know you, you should be searchable, mm-hmm. and what you do should be different. So if your LinkedIn profile looks like everyone else's LinkedIn profile, if your website looks like everyone else's website, and say, well, we are a provider when you of... you say, say LinkedIn profile, you mean the companies? Both. Both and you as well as, as an individual. So in order to shorten a sales cycle, they have to differentiate the company. But before they even differentiate the company, they have to differentiate you. So... Again, we talked about nice things you can do and things you can do to stand out. Um, if you make a cold call to someone, uh, you send, you know, you talk to them on the phone, you send them an email following up, send them a letter at the end of the week. Um, chances are they probably got, um, the ratios might have changed a little bit, they probably got more emails mm-hmm. than cold calls. Um, so let's say that week they got 400 marketing type emails. Um, 300 of them were spam, 100 of them were from salespeople. Uh, and maybe like 50 or 60 sales calls. How many letters do you think they actually get? How many thank you cards? One. Yeah, maybe one. <laughs> so you're standing out. So, oh, man, yeah, you're the guy who sent me the thank you card and all that stuff. So something small that can stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, or maybe when you're messaging to them and say, hey, um, I noticed you're in this industry here. Uh, I found this article very interesting. I think it's helpful. And send it, and then send them a link. So if I sent Sherry a link right now and said, hey, um, did you see this like uh, this weird whatever uh, new 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 trick that someone does in gymnastics <laughs> you'd watch that video yep I right would. if someone said oh hey check out this kid he's like a beast in wrestling you know he's like seven years old yeah i'm definitely watching that <laughs> even if i don't like the person i'm definitely watching that video and it's standing out too so what can if a client is searching online for your company to get to know your company mm-hmm. what are some things that can set you apart okay how do you differentiate uh, we talked about value statements before, what mm-hmm. you can do that's unique and defendable. Um, mm, I like that. Unique and defendable. Yeah, it can't just be like, well, we're, the we're yeah, we're the best. So, you know, for example, uh, 100 contacts is, is very simple. They say every order is verified by, by a warm human body. So an individual looks at every single order. So it's not like you order online, five weeks later it's screwed up. Um, or... Um, or, oh. like, or like, or like, humans e-shirt. screw up too. <laughs> humans screw up, right? But it's not, it's not, it's not just automated systems, right? Um, or like insurance, you know, um, computers when you want it, people when you don't, right? Um, you know, they're the only ones that are actually saying that, and it's right. and it's, it's it's fully defendable. They can go and they can see that. 
in terms of defense uh, and, and or defendability. Um, testimonials, and that's a quick way for people to get to know you and to shorten the sales cycle. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a sales environment, you should put some testimonials on the website make it very simple, right. um, make it short and make it specific. But, I mean, uh, people are more likely, if you go on Amazon, do you read the product descriptions or do you go and read the reviews? Both. Really? I put more weight into the reviews. And I read a thing that said, look at the three-star reviews. Yeah, because that'll... <laughs> they'll give you the pros and the cons. It's, I think they're... I didn't even watch it, but someone wrote an article about uh, how South Park like totally like d- demolished Yelp. It was like, well, I was between one stars and five stars. It really depends on how dessert was and stuff like that. So, yeah, people are very are very finicky with that. But in terms of this and in, in the sales process and shortening it, uh, and, I, and I'm kind of jumping a little bit, you should definitely have a set sales process. It should have like a written like sales playbook and understand what the steps are and where you are in the steps and how the sales funnel looks, you know, uh, suspect, prospect, proposal, close, you know, some, some something simple along that lines. Um, but what was I saying? Oh, uh, testimonials. Your your customer should not have to ask you for a testimonial and stuff like that. Send it. You know, if you have a solid list of testimonials, you send that with the actual proposal. You're going to shorten the sales cycle because they're getting proposals from other people, Mm -hmm. and then you kind of eliminate the, uh, you know, can I can I can I can I can I get some testimonials and say, hey, um, here here here's our pricing proposal. I can save you twelve percent. Here are three other people who are very similar to you who I've helped in the past four Mm -hmm. years. Hear their names. Give them a call. Hear their emails, and you and, you, and you'll know 100% that I'm legit. Establish right away too that your opinion is biased, and be honest with that, and say, "Look, I'm sure you know that my opinion is biased, um, and I'm yeah. going to hype up myself, uh, and every other c- competitor is probably telling you the exact same thing that that they're all the best." Talk to one of my customers, and then and then the, then you'll have an honest opinion about that. Yeah. And to be honest, the customers, if they're if you're treating your customers good, their opinion is biased too. They like you. They don't even know who the other person is. Um, don't be worried or paranoid about, oh, what happens if he shares my customer information with that competitor? No one has ever done that. Yeah. And if you're if you're worried about that, you have much much bigger problems. You should have a firm grasp. If you're putting someone on a testimonial list, it should be it should be 100% locked down customer. Um, so in terms of just a quick tip, send a proposal, have testimonials ready. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that. Have written, and I, I make my new sales reps do this too, and they say, well, you know, um, I'm just working on quote-unquote house accounts. They're managing existing accounts. These are inside sales reps. They're more of um, farmers. Uh, so I say, well, yeah, I can't really do that much you know, with it. You know, this kind of accounts the, the way it is. Everyone's happy. They love us. Great. So, okay, what I want you to do, is get a testimony letter from a small customer, get one from a medium customer, get one from a large customer. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times, if you make it easy for them, they'll do it for you no problem. The easiest way to do that is write the letter yourself and say, hey, I'm just going to write a, a, a quick thing. Uh, if you can just sign and put on your company letter, I'd really appreciate that. And maybe send them a gift card or something like that as a thank you. Mm-hmm. Or you know, or just say, hey, you know, I'm trying to get this account here. Have your testimonials available before the actual proposal. So you can get that from house accounts, existing accounts that you're managing, your farming um, accounts that you maybe have just gotten. Have that available so that way when the customer, mm-hmm. let's say you're just starting a customer ask, hey, can I get some testimonies? Like, oh, shoot, who, who, who well, should I think of? the more of? the better, too, because if you can apply it closely to the potential customer's industry, like that's going to speak volumes that, oh, you have worked with people that are similar to me. I'm going to have similar results. Yeah. So the more testimonials you can have in your pocket, the more likely you are to be able to cu- customize them to prospects. Exactly. And remember in our other podcast, we talked about shortcuts to decision making. Mm-hmm. People like consensus. So right. it, I'm going to make a decision quicker if I think that there's a consensus of other people. So you can say, um, you know, most of the people who stay in this room reuse their towel at least once people are more likely to go ahead and reuse the towel versus I please please reuse the towel. Right. Um, so you can you can use that. Uh, one thing, and this is more in terms of questioning, uh, this is in, in, in the lead up to the sale, not the actual proposal, um, is to set time frames each and every step of the process. This drives me crazy um, when salespeople do not have a set next step. 
and because they're afraid to ask the question. So I will mm-hmm. flat out ask them, say, look, I don't want to seem like a follow-up pest here. Seems like babe, pretty much what you're saying in layman's terms is like, I think you're a cool dude. You think I'm a cool dude. You think this might work out. Um, here's what I need from you. Mm-hmm. Um, and establish a time and say, look, I don't want to bug you. When is a good time to do that? And then ask why that is. So I'll meet with a customer and kind of just establish exactly what they need. Or I'll be with a sales rep and they'll kind of talk about, well, I'm looking for this and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so you ask timeline questions. Hey, when are you looking to get started? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then you you already know the sales cycle. And they might say six months from now. You might be able to shorten that. You can If you present value and it makes sense, you may happen sooner. And next step might be for them to get you invoices. It might be for you to do an on-demo site or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, well, you know what? I think I think the next step is uh, I'd like to see your system. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, say, great. Do you have five minutes? Can I show it to you now? Mm-hmm. Or say, uh, you know, say, well, no. Okay, well, look, I don't want to be a follow-up pest. Can you get at your counter now? And let's let's go ahead and knock this out. Um, I did this when I when I sold insurance. I did this when I was selling 401ks and IRAs and stuff like that. Um, I and always I feel like people are more likely to follow like to follow through with that follow up step if they know exactly why they're doing it if it came out of their own mouth like yeah that they know what that next step is instead of just like hey well you know what we need to meet again you know you're saying this is a specific thing this is about how long it'll take and this is when we'll do it exactly and yeah you that's yeah, and it's funny today is um. This is being recorded on election day in well here in Pencil here in Pennsylvania. Pencil. Oh, pencil. <laughs> here in Pencil. Nickname? I was gonna say Pencil Taki, but I don't wanna I don't wanna offend people. So here in Pennsylvania, uh, there, there there is an election today. Uh, some people listen who aren't from, from the United States of America, so that's okay. Uh, but people are more likely to vote if they know if you call and say, Okay, hey, um, are you gonna vote? Yeah, I'm gonna vote. Okay, what time are you gonna vote? Great. Can you write that down on on, on the thing? Can you I have you down for two o'clock? And if, you know, I don't want to be a follow-up and, past it. And if, you do this to your wife, too. I do. Are you voting tomorrow? What time are you going? We have, we, <laughs> what time are you voting? Do you have a plan? And then I Who know. Who are you voting for? Yeah. And then you know. Then you have permission. If they didn't do that at that time, you say, okay, well, hey, um, you told me you'd get that to me by Friday. I don't mean to be a pest, but it's, you know, it's 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 Tuesday now. What's what's going on? Yeah. So, so exact, exact same thing. Establish uh, milestones right away. Know exactly where you are in the sales process. A lot of times you need to give information to them or they need to give it to you. Um, don't uh, worry so much about, ah, you know, he'll need this amount of time to mull it over and this is how long the sales cycle is. Sometimes average sales cycle can be six weeks. And this happened to me um, when I was uh, selling um, retirement plans, 401ks and IRAs. Uh, there was a gentleman... I couldn't believe it. Because everyone else knows that's like a four to six week sales cycle. Blah blah blah. Uh, he closed a deal in two days. He talked to a customer. Uh, customer um, said, "Great, send me information." He overnighted uh, a stupid uh, brochure from Pennsylvania to California. Overnighted it. The guy called him up that morning and said, "Yeah, I like that. Can you fax me over paper? Let's get it done now." Meanwhile, everywhere else, you're like, what, what, what do you mean? What just, what, what just happened? Mm-hmm. So don't assume that, okay, well, everyone else takes four to five weeks to review it, blah, blah, blah. Shorten it. Shorten it as, as, as much as possible in terms of... Um, and be ready to go at the prospect's pace because sometimes they might be ready to buy. And if you're extending things, they might lose interest. Correct. Um, things you can do, again, talk about... Yes. Oh, I think we're at a halfway point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Real quick, if you guys like what you're hearing so far, um, Marcello has plenty more to talk about, as usual, um, which is why we're doing this and why we enjoy doing this. Um, But you can subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Uh, This helps new people find us, and it helps us move up the rankings. You can email us at pushpullsales at gmail.com or tweet us at pushpullsales. If you guys have any feedback or suggestions for future topics or any questions um, about what we talked about today or in past podcasts, you can also find show notes on our website, which is pushpullsales.com. So you can easily see old show notes. You can see today's show notes. um, And I think that's basically it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Now you broke my train. I thought, what were we talking about? (laughs) 
oh. if the prospect's ready to buy? Is that oh, what yeah, yeah. So in terms of shortening sales cycles, um, have your rebuttals ready. Um, sometimes the reason for not buying now is the best reason to buy now. And I'll give you an example. So a customer might say, and this happens a lot in, 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 my, in my line of business as well, I'm not really busy right now. So it doesn't. I don't really want to make a change in that because not really. I'm not really doing that much. So I, well, if that's the case, that's great. That's going to have the least impact on your business, and you'll get to see us right away. How about we just get the ball rolling right now? Mm-hmm. And people will say, "Yeah, makes sense." If you don't ask, you you'll 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 you'll, you'll never know. Uh, opposite is true. Say, well, I'm really really busy right now. I don't want to make a change. And I talked about this in, a, in another podcast. Um, say great if you're really busy right now you're going to save the most money because you're busy right now you're going to use my service the most you're going to get the savings right away this is going to save you so much time you know now is the best time to do it um, you could also minimize long term plans and, and kind of shrink it when we were when we uh, when I was selling windows and stuff like that um, someone would say well hey and I would ask establish a time limit at the end so they will just say hey 10 windows $10,000 you know when were you planning on doing this anyway Oh, uh, I don't know, six months, a year. Really? That soon? And they say, well, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what they said. I would always say, really, that soon. <laughs> they could have said five years from now. Really, that soon. Well, if it's going to be that soon, I have an idea. You might as well get this. You might as well get this done now. So, and and, 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 that, and that could work for anything, too, because you can basically take the pressure off of them and thinking, that, oh, yeah, you know, wow, well, a year a year is pretty soon. Um, but things things you can do. Uh, is to to use have your rebuttals ready and 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 be ready to come up with a unique way to uh, to, to to tell them to buy the product. Some other things you can do: um, price manipulations that can also shorten a sales cycle. It has to be genuine. It has to be a legitimate reason. It has to make sense. Uh, if not, you're going to rely on that. Um, it's just like the jewelry store that everything is on sale 99 percent of the time. I feel bad. Right. For, I feel bad for the for for the for the poor schmuck. Who does buy that, you know, diamond care right, jewelry when it's, when it's not, not fifty yeah, percent off? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so manipulations, how you can use them, you, you got to make it legitimate. So you know, buying a car, for example, and we've been looking at a couple of different cars. Now's a great time to buy to buy a vehicle because there's a legitimate reason they need to clear inventory. New new models are coming in, all that good stuff. Uh, it's a slow time for them, so we can take advantage of some salespeople. If you sell cars, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you can use manipulations. You can use pricing. Um, some other things you can do to uh, kind of convince someone and to get the sales cycle to move along shorter um, is, is to start smaller. Sometimes what will happen is is you'll go in with a big project and a, and a big thing. So, okay, hey, uh, I have a $2 million sale right here. A $2 million decision is a hard decision for people to make. Right. You can break that down to the actual, you write down to, to the ridiculous. Okay, well, hey. How about we just get started in this department? How about we just do this for a year? And maybe that's only like a forty or fifty thousand dollar decision. Maybe they can make that like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those decisions are made fairly quickly. This is why you know it's similar to um, like content marketing, where people you know you're seeing a lot of like free webinars, free eBooks, free whatever. Um, they're entering the sales funnel. And yeah, yeah, you you just want them. You want them to get to know you better. You want them to understand what you're offering. You want to educate them a little bit and offer them some value, in hopes that um, you know you build that trust a little bit quicker without them actually having to open their wallet. Yeah, or even even a, even a paid webinar webinar too. Mm-hmm. Let's say yeah. fifty bucks for a webinar and then. Right. You know, that'll lead me into an intro for like a $2,000 course. If I like the webinar, eh, 50 bucks, eh, why not? I'll spend $2,000. You say $2,000 right off the bat, eh, I don't know about that. Right, and that's the thing. People want to get to know you, what you're offering, and what you have to say. You know, I, it is a risk for your customer. And they, they, they want to be con- It is a risk, and they want to be consistent. So if they've already made a risk in the past and said, well, hey, you gave me a shot on $50, why wouldn't you give me a shot on, on $200 on, mm-hmm. on $2,000? Right. Um, you know, and that could, and that can definitely work in your favor. Uh, one other thing uh, is to know who is away from the table. Uh, I just had a one-on-one meeting, and if, if you're listening to this, um, you know, definitely take note uh, with, with with one of my sales reps. And um, you know, she thought she was talking to the actual decision maker, and maybe someone else is involved. 
Know, know what moves can be made away from the table. Know what your person you're dealing with strengths are. And know who can basically poo-poo and pee-pee on, 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 on the actual <laughs> sale. You like that? Um, I was not expecting that. I'm not going to say the S word. You know, you know who's going who's gonna to S all over your deal and, and mess it up or, or, or F it all up. Um, so, yeah, poo-poo, pee-pee up and all, all, all on your deal. So, for example, we were talking about an account. Um, it's not it's not huge not huge by any means. Um, a new person took took the role, and it seems on paper he filled in someone else's responsibility who had that, or at least we thought mm-hmm. based on that. But there's multiple departments involved and stuff like that. And say, well, he says he had to bring it up with his supervisor. Like, who is his supervisor? Oh, Who's I don't. The old guy? Huh? It was the other guy that. I know. I don't. We just had the conversation. It's, this is talking about shortening the sales cycle. She's like, "Well, hey, can you come help close the account?" Again, talking about moving things internally. Can you make the call? Can you do this? That that might only shorten it a little bit. You need to do things on your end where you established and did your research up front to uh, to help me find the right person. Um, that actually leads me to another point. Uh, getting to the right person, email. Emailing them right away, if you have the direct contact, shortens the sales cycle. So there's some great sources out here, and bear in mind we're not we're not paid for this at this moment. Um, you know, uh, there's Jigsaw, there's Zoom Info, there's uh, Info Free, Database.com. There's a bunch of services that can get you the name and title and email address of the actual decision maker. What were those again? Uh, info freeze one. Uh, info free. Info freeze one of them. It's not actually free. You pay for it. Um, <laughs> uh, info USA. Info group. I think it is. Jigsaw. Like, like, like. Whatever. Like from a uh, saw. Yeah, yeah, from saw. Yeah, it was funny. Actually, one of their sales reps called me a couple of years ago, and then, and then like, uh, the personal transfer called me like Jigsaw is on the phone for you. Uh, I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, they they never they never made that connection. Um, database.com, Hoover's, Dun and Bradstreet. Uh, those are all great resources. Uh, Zoom, Z O O M info.com. And they have different levels of service. Uh, LinkedIn, another one where you can get the direct contact and find out who that is. If you can get their direct email, it's going to shorten the sales. You're going to get a hold of the right person sooner mm-hmm. versus making calls and calls and calls on, oh, that's not even the right department. Um, but just in terms of, let's say you talk to the person, you, you have a feeling, um, you know, that, that you're actually dealing with the right individual, um, but there might be people away from the table. So in this situation, what we're doing is we're selling uh, logistics services, transportation services. Um, she was in touch with someone that could give her invoices and give her the data, um, but whose background was in not in what we were, not in freight, not in what we were looking at. Background was in small package. Um, so that person uh, didn't seem like he was a decision maker or he didn't have enough clout, enough um, internal, uh, basically, uh, tokens uh, within his company where he can cash in those chi- or chips, uh, where he can cash in those chips and make a recommendation like for PNG. Right. Access to invoices, sure. Uh, enough clout to make a decision to say, hey, go ahead and, and start using this company. Not so much. And again, same excuses. Uh, it's a really, really busy time. So we talked about a couple of different things we can do. Say, well, how about we first, let's, let's find the right person. There's different departments. Let's talk with the purchasing department. Who is a purchasing person? Who mainly, how do they place your PO? Oh, I don't know. You should know that. Right. Um, you know, uh, and what is this person's background? How is he, how long is that person going to be there? Because let's say you do work your butt off, you get the account right. and then that person's gone in a month and they're back to using whoever you need to have. Uh, "Quote unquote grassroots." So, short and sales cycle. Know who else is around uh, the table, who's or, or who's an influencer, and we can mm-hmm. even do a whole a whole uh, topic on that on just different influencer decision maker power to say yes, power to say no. Um, but in terms of shortening the sales cycle, before you do the most extreme things and bring in your sales manager and and try to you know open the floodgates and get people to run three hundred quotes before you're even talking to the right person, it, it doesn't right. make sense. Right. You know, it's the same thing. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna buy a house, um, you know, we we actually did the opposite. Um, <laughs> you know, first thing we did we was is we looked at houses we liked, and we said, oh shoot, we need a mortgage guy. Um, <laughs> most most people do most people do the opposite. Um, so when we talk about going into those accounts and shortening the sales cycle, 
there are some questions you can ask that can get you to the right person. So say, right. okay, one simple question and power it's a powerful question. Say, well, hey, um, rather than insult someone, say, is this your decision? Are you the decision maker for this? Um, some people might take it the wrong way. So, hey, look, um, would there be anyone who would not be happy, you know, if you guys were to make a switch internally? Mm-hmm. I might say, well, I might have to run it by this person, I might have to run it by that person, but no, I don't, I don't really think so. Say, great. Uh, how long has this person been in the company? Great. Are you familiar with them? And blah blah blah. No, good. Um, can we talk to them? And then, and, and don't be afraid to ask right while you're there. Say, could you grab them for a couple minutes? Right. You know, and then again, talking about uh, shortening the sales cycle. Another example, she gave uh, an account that wasn't moving along. So, well. I met with this guy and we're moving this part of the business, but he needs to talk to his purchasing manager so we can get the inbound, the inbound frame. Great. Who is the purchasing manager? Oh, I don't know. You know, is he going to talk to him? He said he would. When did he say he would talk to him? By establish that. So if someone says, yes, I will talk to him. Great. When are you going to talk to him? When can we set up that meeting? Mm-hmm. Um, small things you can do and we'll kind of wrap it up. Uh, food, bribes, pizza, <laughs> stuff like that. If you have an excuse to get some FaceTime with the customer and another follow-up, it'll it'll definitely help shorten the sales cycle. Don't be afraid to call and just ask flat out, and pizza makes it easier to do that, or donuts right. or anything like that, and say, hey, um, be in the area. I was in the area, I dropped the pizza. Real quick, the reason from the reason why why I was in the area and stuff like that, I want to find out, you know, how, how come we're not doing business? What's going on? And they might tell you right then and there. So, well, you know, I was worried about um, a refinance or something like that. We have a big, like, uh, whatever capital purchase coming up, and, you know, we're, we're refinancing that and stuff like that. So, okay, is that the only thing? Yeah, that's the only thing. So now you're, you're isolating. Okay, well, and then be creative. Think about different ways that you can you can work around it. This shouldn't be your first time doing that, and if it is, talk to your manager and say, hey, this is the situation I'm in. There are times when I was just starting off in sales where I... Can you say to them, if you're in the moment, can you say that you want to go, you know, want to discuss with your manager and see if we can come up with some creative solutions to get around this? Yeah. It's okay to, it's okay to to not know everything on the spot as long as you're still being professional and and telling them that you're going to go research it, you're going to go find out a solution and you're going to do best by them. Absolutely. You and and that and that would be that would be the first time and then and then in terms of sales process and procedure, um, you know have you should know that if your if your sales manager is accessible if you can get a hold of them and yeah. sometimes you're doing it for show just to, to get that higher up authority and say look I got my sales manager involved in this you know I have a I'm really really pushing that so he's getting kind of not not necessarily pressure that's that velvet hammer say look man I I pulled some strings I got you this. And uh, again, if you come in, a, in from a place of compassion and, and, and genuine care for the customer, it'll come across the way, not like, look, man, I got you a pretty good discount here. Right. We're talking like 50%. <laughs> like, look, no, I, re- I went to bat for you. I looked at the account. I think we can really help, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do and this for everybody. And that should be true. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. None of this works um, long term if, if you're not genuine. But you talked about asking a manager and stuff like that. Uh, I like uh, I think it's a quote by Bill Gates. If you're born, um, if you're born poor, it's not your fault. If you die poor, it is. Um, you should not, you know. If you don't know one time, that's fine. Uh, but if you don't know again, that is that is definitely that's that, that's definitely your fault. So examples where being creative and stuff like that. Uh, when I was selling Windows, the first time I went out there. I had no idea we could do a refinance or something like that or bundle something in. So right. I was like, oh, I have a loan. I want this to be paid off. I had no idea. I was right. like, well, what does it matter? These are really good windows, and I'm going to save you money. <laughs> and that was his hang-up. Um, I didn't call my manager. I didn't get that sale. So then another sales rep went in. He's like, oh, yeah, all we had to do, we just had to do a consolidation loan. And that was it. Yeah, so we wrapped up the payments. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, no. No, you did a really good job. He really liked you. If you could have done a consolidation loan, you would have had the business. I'm like, are you? I was, I was pissed. Yeah, I never, but you should have called. 
I should have. I'd never made that mistake again. <laughs> even not. even if it was impossible for the business to be for the deal to be done, I still call I still call my manager. Maybe he'd pull something out of out of his butt. Be like, hey, here's a situation. They have like a negative 700 credit score. <laughs> um, you know, they don't even own the house, but they really like the windows. What can I do to make this? What can I do to make this? And the people are like on the phone, like they're like, yeah, come on, do this. You can get this. <laughs> like as 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 if you can work as if you can work up a miracle. Um, yeah, but if they're seeing that too, and if they're seeing that you're trying for them, trying to get them what they want, you might not get that sale, but you might get a referral. Oh, you abs- might get the neighbor. Absolutely, uh, I've had I've had stuff where people uh, where I I didn't get the deal done, uh, but they went and they took me out for dinner. <laughs> I couldn't believe they're like, look, I have like no money. I'm going to take you out for dinner though, and stuff like that. Um, so cra- cra- crazy stuff has happened. Uh, I'll give you my last tip. Uh, this is long. We can continue this on another one and ways to shorten a sales cycle. Enthusiasm. Enthusiastic, enthusiastic as hell. If you're excited about what you're doing and you're excited about the product and everything else is going to fall in place because you're going to know you're going to know your stuff. Your presentation is going to be really, really good because you're going to be able to differentiate right away. They're going to see that. They're going to notice that energy. It's very, very positive. Positive energy. Yes nod momentum all that is coming together so that the, i'm gonna leave you that with my final tip be enthusiastic as hell have a lot of energy um present from 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 a place of conviction and a place of uh, of, of compassion i did most of the talking today didn't i <laughs> that's all right all right um yeah you knew, had most of the knowledge for this one so um, does that wrap us up for the episode? That will that will wrap us up. We can cover some of the more technical things, like on your part, the marketing and the inbound and the filtering yeah. and the and all, and all that good stuff. I just wanted yeah. to give you. I some... mean, if you're getting marketing qualified leads coming mm-hmm. to you, if you're getting good leads from your marketing department, your sales process should be shorter. Absolutely. So we can we can discuss that another topic. Talk about different um, different ways you can you can persuade people and closing and stuff like that. Because anything you can do. Uh, that makes you a better salesperson should should shorten the sales cycle. But but these were things that that specifically can make the time from initial contact to final decision shorter. Um, so that being said, <laughs> that being thank said, thank you to bensound.com for our intro and outro music, and thanks to you guys for listening. You can tune in next time where we will tackle another topic. And if you have any questions or feedback on today's episode, head and to pushpullsales.com. And I could probably like tweet there. us and like share it and stuff like that. If you like I it, can you also could. share oh, yeah, it? I you like share it. Yeah, if you, I think I think we've been telling people for weeks to like us and to rate us. Share it. If if to help <laughs> help out help out your team here. You know, don't wait until tomorrow to do that. If you like it, just send it right away. There should be a link, right? I don't know. Um, but yeah, you thank you again for listening. Share See ya. Share off our Twitter. Talk to you guys later. Bye.